Hi, this is Barry. Today I'm going to talk about application security and capabilities that are available to help us secure our workloads and applications. So I believe we can all agree that uh, we're so dependent on applications today, right? They're basically a critical asset to businesses. And given that applications are supposed to be more and more agile today, and at the same time, attack surfaces are way larger than before, and legacy tools alone won't be enough. Besides all the regulations and compliance requirements that we have to meet, which is also another big challenge, right? And data actually shows that 90% of the security teams had experienced some sort of security incidents in the past. And a lot of organizations, like almost half of them, uh, don't even have like an actual security solution in place, right? And it takes months for organizations to contain and mitigate breaches. And also, you know, that's with a super high average cost attached as well. So to help on that, uh, Cisco actually has the broadest set of solutions to help secure applications and workloads. So I created this slide to showcase the different focuses and capabilities of Cisco's secure application solutions. So you can navigate and find the best fit for your specific use cases. So let's start by looking at the main offering first on the radar chart. All of these solutions can provide granular visibility and control over your application, and they can all dramatically reduce the attack surface. But as you can see, they have their own focuses and use cases, and finding the best fit for your environment is important, right? So secure workload, for example, which is at the bottom here, it is used to be called titration, as you know, and it is a robust solution that provides micro segmentation across private, public, and hybrid clouds. It provides consistent protection, regardless of which platform you use, right? AWS, Azure, Google, and whatever. And it automatically generates whitelist-based policies and keep them up to date based on your application behavior and so you can have consistent policy enforcement across the board. It's on-prem and cloud, right? So you don't have to understand how to create those policies on those different platforms. Basically, um, Secure Workload does it all for you automatically. And with Secure Workload, we can also see every conversation among our physical and virtual machines, as well as containers, uh, down to process level and uh, control things like privilege escalation, file access, right, and shellcode execution and all of those. And, and it can see vulnerabilities um, down to software package level. And it offers ability to restrict or, let's say, quarantine workloads, right, based on the nature of that vulnerability. So also called uh, soft patching as well, right? So it's, it's definitely a true automated uh, zero trust uh, security solution for your workloads. And I, I have a short video to demo secure workload and you can click here to, to view. And in my view, secure workload is a best fit for customers who want to focus more on infrastructure level security as well as uh, network segmentation, right? So typically they would acquire software from vendors and host themselves, right? And an agent is typically required uh, to have granular visibility and control over these uh, workloads, right? And of course, one can argue that secure workload can can be agentless if we just monitor traffic and you know and work with existing control points like ACI or secure firewalls, right? Through feeding dynamic uh, objects for enforcing policies, and that that's totally doable as well, right? But you know, of course, uh, the agent approach give you way more visibility, like I said, down to process level, uh, OS level security. So on the other hand. A secure workload also provides endpoint visibility through uh, any connect with a network visibility module. It's got a really, really broad coverage in terms of use cases. And as you know, today, more and more applications are developed as cloud native. Uh, actually, 90% of new applications are cloud native today. And there are lots of benefits like a developer driven deployments, auto scaling without having to worry about spinning up new VMs and fault tolerance and so on. So, but 
cloud native applications also massively increase attack surface as well. So as uh, code moves through the CI CD pipeline into production, uh, many things could go wrong, like things like code repository. So how safe is that? A lot of them might be like open source and also Docker image that could, that, that we built on uh, whether it can be trusted, right? So there might be some third party images that we're using. And also of course, East West API calls and message bus uh, that pretty much all uh, cloud native solutions utilized like uh, MQ and things like Kafka. So th they can all potentially be leveraged by bad guys to gain foothold into our system, right? So secure workload does secure containerized applications. So we have visibility and control over whom the containers uh, through the pod can talk to, and we can block the bad guys for sure. However, if a customer want deeper visibility, meaning especially visibility inside the containers or uh, be in line for all API calls, see all the uh, both east west and north south api calls and be able to score uh, the apis and also build the security solution into ci cd pipelines then secure uh, application which is the red one here uh, which is also known as uh, secure cloud native it might be a better fit right so especially when most applications this customer have are cloud native, right? So it even has a free tier that secures up to like five nodes. So secure application is also uh, agentless, as you can see here, and it runs natively alongside the application, which perfectly aligns with uh, CI/CD pipeline. So so security can easily be built into the CI/CD process with centralized policy management and all that, right? So it validates config and manage uh, connections and it provides exploit analysis and also uh, very importantly image uh, scanning and validation right and so much more right so to see secure application in in action i have a demo so please click here and now the third solution which is a secure app by app dynamics it is a whole new level deeper, right? So it gives us code level visibility. However, it has a bit of a narrower focus since the code has to be uh, java.net and so on. So as you know, App Dynamics is an application performance management system, uh, which is, of course, agent based, right? So we definitely need to deploy an agent, uh, but it could be it could be giving us way more visibility, right? It could capture all application events on a code level. Of course, library dependencies, uh, like for example, lock for shell, right? So whether or the library that we're using is vulnerable and it can stop an API or a, a query in real time that has malicious shell code in it, right? So lots of uh, capabilities. And of course, all three of these solutions can help us prevent lock for J. The level of visibility is, of course, a little bit different, but they, they're all very efficient in protecting us against lock for shell, spring for shell, and whatever it is. In a nutshell, depending on what kind of application uh, customers have today, one of the solutions should fit, or maybe uh, sometimes it's a combination of solutions for a customer, say, uh, that have a mix of different applications. And this is quite common for all the Customers that I have dealt with in the past, they usually have like um, a lot of them, like large customers have hundreds of applications. Some of them they acquire and some of them they, uh, they develop themselves. It's quite common that we have a combination. Another important component is that we need to secure the user's access, right, to applications. Of course, in this case, dual secure access from a secure access perspective safeguards users and devices and application throughout the stacks that we had discussed and in addition to these solutions maybe let's say secure ops teams they need logging for investigation and hunting and behavioral analytics and threat intelligence correlation for threat detection and response from an uh, infrastructure point of view right so secure cloud analytics is the solution for that so it basically applies across the board it doesn't matter what 
if you're trying to protect just your network infrastructure or your applications, right? So because it's secure cloud analytics is able to natively work with all major cloud platforms and your on-prem uh, network, right? So it, what it does is it ingests flow logs from the clouds and work with your on-prem networks uh, with sensors. So what it does is it can help to identify all network entities leveraging uh, machine learning and AI, of course, and see all of their conversations. It can correlate and uh, and then detect threats like um, data exfiltration, uh, overly permissive access, uh, things like abnormal behavior and uh, network compliance risks. I have a video to demo secure cloud analytics as well. So you can, when you click here, you can see that. At this point, you might be wondering, yeah, this is a handful of tools, right? And uh, secure ops teams, they, they might need all of their tools all work together with ease and they need unified dashboard and policy and centralized and correlated detection and, and uh, with enough context for them to do threat hunting that and a faster way of course to respond to secure instance so th this is exactly what SecureX does it has a lot of the components like i mentioned right so it can help to do managed detection and response services and it helps with orchestration and automation for responses and it also uh, do incident response and remediation and threat hunting so i have a video to demo all of these feel free to check out that video as well and meanwhile i have two things highlighted here very importantly kenna so since we're getting a lot of vulnerability reports from all of these tools. And we need to know which of them should I focus on, right? And uh, what is relevant to me and how should I prioritize patching the, these vulnerabilities? Kenna is the solution that could help you reduce your effort down to 5% and focus on what really matters to you with a lot of context and uh, uh, understanding your assets and understanding all the different feeds like from from all different sources and help you prioritize your your focus on vulnerabilities. Um, so the other one that I highlighted here is Secure Cloud Insight. So that's a solution that provides a, a proactive attack surface management. It uh, helps to manage your all your cloud assets, uh, inventory control, also cloud security posture and uh, configuration best practices. And my favorite is actually uh, compliance because it has this really, really helpful compliance view um, that uh, work with all the different benchmarks and standards and including the ones that come with your different cloud providers. So AWS, Azure, Google, and of course, it can work with other standards as well. So very importantly, like SOC 2 and HIPAA, uh, FedRAMP and uh, GDPR, CMMC, all of these different standards, and you can add additional frameworks as well. And what it does is it runs these standards against your assets and it can pinpoint exactly how compliant you are and it can show you all the gap analysis. Uh, let's say, for example, HIPAA, and I want to see all of the um, gap uh, detected. So it can show me exactly uh, what is my gap and it uh, does real-time query that shows me exactly what I need to do to mitigate that gap and to be compliant again, right? So, yeah, so so you can see all of these queries are run real time and it shows me all the results of the assets that I need to work on. Really useful solution. And that is um, the solutions that I want to cover in a nutshell. But of course, Talos is feeding all of the uh, threat intelligence into all of these solutions. And of course they have unmatched visibility and uh, all of these solutions are not just consuming all of the same threat intelligence, but they're also contributing to the same uh, threat uh, intelligence in the cloud as well. So these are the solutions uh, I want to cover, but of course there are a ton more that are listed here, like, you know, from a visibility and observability point of view. Of course, Thousand Eyes goes uh, from users all the way up to our application stack and it helps to manage all the performance of the applications and users experience and of course helps with troubleshooting and pinpoint exactly where the problems are. 
I hope you find this framework helpful and hopefully it can help you find the right solution for your use cases. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Thank you so much.